Hello, dear students, welcome to a massive open online course on Swayam in Chemistry. Myself, Preeti Kiran, PGT Chemistry from Kendriya Vidyalaya No. 1, Air Force Station, Hinden. Dear students, in the previous module of Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure, Unit 4 of Class 11th, I discussed about formation of different types of bond, lattice enthalpy and bond parameters. Postulates of VACPR theory, shapes of molecules containing bond pairs only, shapes of molecules containing lone pair and bond pair, valence bond theory, orbital overlap concept, directional properties of the bonds. Today, we will study about overlapping of the atomic orbitals and hybridization. The valence bond theory explains the shape the formation and directional properties of the bonds in the polyatomic molecules like methane, ammonia and water etc. in the terms of overlap and hybridization of atomic orbitals. Let us discuss the overlapping of atomic orbitals. When the orbitals of two atoms come close to form bond, their overlap may be positive negative or zero depending upon the sign that is the phase and direction of orientation of amplitude of the orbital wave function in space. The figure will show you the positive and the negative overlap. The positive and the negative sign on the boundary surface diagrams and in figure the sign depicts the phase of the orbital wave function and they are not related to charge. Orbitals forming bonds should have same sign that is phase and orientation in space. This is called positive overlap. The various overlaps of S and P orbitals are depicted in the figure. Let us understand positive, negative and zero overlap from the following figure. Now in the figure you can see the different type of overlaps. The zero overlap means out of phase due to different orientation and direction of approach. The criteria of overlap as the main factor for the formation of the covalent bonds applies uniformly to the homonuclear or heteronuclear diatomic and polyatomic molecules. We know that the shapes of methane, ammonia and water molecules are tetrahedral, pyramidal and bent respectively. It would be therefore interesting to use valence bond theory to find out if these geometrical shapes can be explained in terms of the orbital overlaps. Let us first consider the formation of methane molecule. The electronic configuration of the carbon atomic number 6 in its ground state is core of helium 2s2 2p2 which in the excited state becomes the core of helium 2s1 2px1 2py1 2pz1 the energy required for this excitation is compensated by the release of energy due to the overlap between the orbitals of the carbon and hydrogen the four atomic orbitals of the carbon, each with an unpaired electron, can overlap with the 1s orbitals of the four hydrogen atoms which are also singly occupied. This will result in the formation of four CH bonds. It will however be observed that while the 3p orbitals of the carbon are at 90 degree to one another, the HCH angles for these also be 90 degree. The 2s orbital of carbon and the 1s orbital of hydrogen are spherically symmetrical and they can overlap in any direction. Therefore, the direction of the fourth CH bond cannot be ascertained. This description does not fit in with the tetrahedral HCH angle of 109.5 degrees. Clearly, it follows that simple atomic orbital overlap does not account for the directional characteristics of the bonds in methane. Using similar procedure and arguments, it can be seen that in the case of ammonia and water, 
molecules the HNH and HOH angles should be 90 degree. This is in disagreement with the actual bond angles of 107 and 104.5 in the ammonia and water molecules respectively. Types of overlapping and the nature of the covalent bonds. The covalent bonds may be classified into two types depending upon the types of overlapping. The first one is sigma bond and the second one is the pi bond. Let us discuss each type of bond. First, the sigma bond. This type of covalent bond is formed by the end to end or head on overlap of the bonding orbitals along the internuclear axis. This is called as head on overlap or axial overlap. This can be formed by any one of the following types of the combinations of atomic orbitals. SS overlapping. In this case, there is an overlap of two half-filled S orbitals along the internuclear axis as shown below in the figure. Now, SP overlapping. This type of overlap occurs between half-filled S orbitals of the one atom and half-filled P orbitals of the another atom. Again, you can see in the figure the overlap of the S orbital which is spherically symmetrical and P orbitals are dumbbell shaped. This is SP overlapping. Now, PP overlapping. This type of overlap takes place between half filled P orbitals of the two atoms, approaching atoms. Now, the pi bond. In the formation of the pi bond, the atomic orbitals overlap in such a way that their axis remains parallel to each other and perpendicular to the internuclear axis. The orbitals form due to the sidewise overlapping consist of two saucer type charge clouds above and below the plane of the participating atoms. Figure shows a pi bond formation or p orbital overlapping. Here now you can see the cloud of the electrons above and below the plane of the atoms. Now let us discuss about the strength of the sigma and the pi bonds. Basically the strength of the bond depends upon the extent of overlapping. In case of sigma bond the overlapping of the orbitals takes place to a larger extent. Hence sigma bond is stronger as compared to the pi bond where the extent of overlapping occurs to a smaller extent. Further, it is important to note that in the formation of the multiple bonds between two atoms of a molecule, pi bonds is formed in the addition to a sigma bond. Now, let us discuss about hybridization. In order to explain the characteristic geometrical shapes of the polyatomic molecules like methane, ammonia, water, etc., Pauling introduced the concept of hybridization. According to him, the atomic orbitals combine to form new set of equivalent orbitals known as hybrid orbitals. We can say that an imaginary mixing process converts a set of the atomic orbitals to a new set of hybrid atomic orbitals or hybrid orbitals. At this level, we consider the following hybrid orbitals. sp, sp2, sp3, sp3d and sp3d2. Unlike pure orbitals, the hybrid orbitals are used in the bond formation. The phenomena is known as hybridization which can be defined as the process of intermixing of the orbitals of slightly different energies so as to redistribute the energies resulting in the formation of a new set of orbitals of equivalent energy and shape. For example, when 1, 2s and 3 2p orbitals of the carbon hybridize, there is the formation of 4 new sp3 hybrid orbitals. Now let me tell you the salient features of hybridization. The main feature of hybridization are as under. The number of the hybrid orbitals is equal to the number of the atomic orbitals that get hybridized. 
Number 2, the hybridized orbitals are always equivalent in energy and shape. The next is, the hybrid orbitals are more effective in forming stable bonds than the pure atomic orbitals. These hybrid orbitals are directed in the space in some preferred direction to have minimum repulsion between the electron pairs and thus a stable arrangement. Therefore, the type of the hybridization indicates the geometry of the molecules. Now, the important conditions for hybridization. The first one is, the orbitals present in the valence shell of the atoms are hybridized. The orbitals undergoing hybridization should have almost equal energy. Promotion of electron is not essential condition prior to hybridization. It is not necessary that only half filled orbitals participate in hybridization. In some cases, even filled orbitals of the valence shell take part in hybridization. Now, the types of hybridization. There are various types of hybridization involving S, P and D orbitals. The different types of hybridization are as under. Let us discuss each with an example. The first one is the SP hybridization. This type of hybridization involves the mixing of one S and one P orbital, resulting in the formation of two equivalent SP hybrid orbitals. The suitable orbitals for SP hybridization are S and PZ, if the hybrid orbitals are to lie along the Z axis. Each SP hybrid orbitals has 50 percent S character and 50 percent P character. Figure shows you the formation of SP hybrid orbitals. Now, in the figure you can see the mixing of 1 S and P Z orbital to give rise to SP hybridization. Such a molecule in which the central atom is SP hybridized and linked directly to two other central atoms possess linear geometry. This type of hybridization is also known as diagonal hybridization. The two SP hybrids point in the opposite direction along the Z axis with projecting positive lobes and very small negative lobes which provide more effective overlapping resulting in the formation of stronger bonds. Let us now take example of the molecules having SP hybridization. The first example is beryllium chloride. The ground state electronic configuration of beryllium is 1s2, 2s2. Ground state electronic configuration shows no unpaired electron, but in the excited state, one of the 2s electron is promoted to vacant 2p orbital to account for its bivalency. 1 2s and 1 2p orbital gets hybridized to form 2 sp hybridized orbitals. These 2 sp hybrid orbitals are oriented in opposite direction forming an angle of 180 degrees. Each of the sp hybridized orbital overlaps with the 2p orbital of chlorine axially and form 2 b e c l sigma bonds. This is shown in the figure. Figure A shows you the formation of SP hybrids from S and P orbital and figure B shows you the formation of the linear beryllium chloride molecule. Now, the SP2 hybridization. In this hybridization, there is involvement of 1 S and 2 P orbitals in order to form 3 equivalent SP2 hybridized orbitals. Now, the figure shows you the formation of sp2 hybrid orbitals. Here you can see that 1s and 2p orbitals are mixing. For this, the best example is beryllium trichloride molecule. In the ground state, electronic configuration of central boron atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. In the excited state, one of the 2s electrons is promoted to vacant 2p orbital. As a result, boron has three unpaired electrons. These three orbitals, 
1, 2 S and 2, 2 P hybridize to form 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals. The 3 hybrid orbitals so formed are oriented in a trigonal planar arrangement and the overlap with 2p orbital of the chlorine to form 3 BCL bonds. Therefore, in BCL3, the geometry is trigonal planar with CL-BCL bond angle of 120 degrees. Figure shows you the formation of sp2 hybrids and the BCL3 molecule. Now, the third is sp3 hybridization. This type of hybridization can be explained by taking the example of methane that is CH4 molecule in which there is mixing of 1 s orbital and 3 p orbitals of the valence shell to form 4 sp3 hybrid orbital of equivalent energies and shapes. The figure shows you the formation of sp3 hybrid orbitals. Here you can see that there is 1 s and 3 p orbitals mixing. Now there is 25 percent s character and 75 percent p character in each sp3 hybrid orbital. The 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals so formed are directed towards the 4 corners of the tetrahedron. The angle between sp3 hybrid orbitals is 109.5 degrees. Figure shows you the formation of the sp3 hybrid orbitals by the combination of s, px, py and pz atomic orbitals of the carbon and the formation of the CH4 molecule. The structure of ammonia and water molecules can also be explained with the help of sp3 hybridization. Now let me discuss ammonia. In ammonia, the valence shell that is outer electronic configuration of nitrogen in the ground state is 2s2, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1 having 3 unpaired electrons in the sp3 hybrid orbitals and a lone pair of electron is present in the fourth one. These 3 hybrid orbitals overlap with the 1s orbital of the hydrogen atom to form 3 n h sigma bonds. Here in the figure you can see. We know that the force on the repulsion between a lone pair and a bond pair is more than the force of repulsion between the two bond pair of electrons. The molecule thus gets distorted and the bond angle is reduced to 107 degree from 109.5 degrees. The geometry of such a molecule will be pyramidal. The figure shows you the formation of ammonia molecule. In case of water molecule, the 4 oxygen orbitals 1, 2 s and 3, 2 p undergo sp3 hybridization forming 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals out of which 2 contain 1 electron each and the other 2 contain a pair of electrons. These 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals acquire a tetrahedral geometry with 2 corners occupied by the hydrogen atoms while the other 2 by the lone pairs. The bond angle in this case is reduced to 104.5 degrees from 109.5 degrees. Figure shows you that how the molecule thus acquires a V shape or angular geometry. Figure shows the formation of the water molecule. Other examples of the sp3, sp2 and sp hybridization. sp3 hybridization in ethane molecule. In ethane molecule, both the carbon atoms assume sp3 hybrid state. One of the four sp3 hybrid orbitals of the carbon atom overlaps axially with similar orbitals of the other atom to form sp3, sp3 sigma bond while the other 3 hybrid orbitals of each carbon atom are used in forming sp3 s sigma bonds with hydrogen atoms as discussed in section 6th point number 3. Therefore, in ethane carbon carbon sigma bond bond length is 154 picometers and each ch bond length is 109 picometers.
sp2 hybridization in c2h4 that is ethene molecule in the formation of ethene molecule one of the sp2 hybrid orbitals of the carbon atom overlaps exactly with sp2 hybridized orbital of another carbon atom to form cc sigma bond while the other two sp2 hybrid orbitals of each carbon atom are used for making sp2s sigma bond with two hydrogen atoms the unhybridized orbital 2px or 2py of one carbon atom overlaps sidewise with the similar orbital of the other carbon atom to form weak pi bond which consists of two equal electron clouds distributed above and below the plane of the carbon and hydrogen atom thus in the ethene molecule the carbon carbon bond consists of one sp2 sp2 sigma bond and one pi bond between the p orbitals which are not used in the hybridization and are perpendicular to the plane of the molecule the bond length is 134 picometer and the ch bond is sp2 s sigma bond with bond length 108 picometers the hch bond angle is 117.6 degrees while the hcc angle is 121 degrees the formation of sigma and the pi bonds in ethene is shown in the figure the figure shows you the formation of sigma and the pi bonds in ethene sp hybridization in c2h2 that is ethene in the formation of ethene molecule both the carbon atoms undergo sp hybridization having two unhybridized orbital that is 2py and 2px one sp hybrid orbital of the one carbon atom overlaps exactly with the sp hybrid orbital of the other carbon atom to form cc sigma bond while the other hybridized orbital of each carbon atom overlaps exactly with the half filled s orbital of the hydrogen atoms forming sigma bond each of the two unhybridized p orbitals of both the carbon atom overlaps sidewise to form two pi bonds between the carbon atoms so the triple bond between the two carbon atoms is made up of one sigma and two pi bonds now the figure shows you the formation of sigma and pi bonds in ethene now the hybridization of elements involving d orbitals the elements present in the third period contain d orbitals in addition to s and p orbitals the energy of the 3d orbitals are comparable to the energy of the 3s and 3p orbitals the energy of the 3d orbitals are also comparable to those of 4s and 4p orbitals as a consequence the hybridization involving either 3s 3p and 3d or 3d 4s and 4p is possible however since the difference in the energies of the 3p and 4s orbitals is significant no hybridization involving 3p 3d and 4s orbitals is possible the important hybridization scheme involving s p and d orbitals are summarized below formation of pcl5 it is a good example of sp 3d hybridization the ground state and the excited state outer electronic configuration of phosphorus atomic number 15 are represented below the sp3d hybrid orbitals filled by the electron pairs donated by five chlorine atoms sp3d hybrid orbitals filled by electron pairs and donated by five chlorine atoms now the five orbitals that is 1s 3p and 1d orbital are available for hybridization to yield a set of 5 sp3d hybrid orbitals which are directed towards the five corners of a trigonal bipyramidal as depicted in the figure the figure shows you the trigonal bipyramidal geometry of pcl5 molecule it should be noted that all the bond angles in the trigonal bipyramidal geometry are not equivalent in pcl5 the 5 sp3d orbitals of phosphorus 
overlap with the singly occupied p orbitals of the chlorine atoms to form 5 PCl sigma bonds. The 3 PCl bonds lie in one plane and they make an angle of 120 degrees with each other. These bonds are termed as equatorial bonds. The remaining 2 PCl bonds one lying above and the other lying below the equatorial plane make an angle of 90 degree with the plane. These bonds are called axial bonds. As the axial bond pairs suffer more repulsion and more repulsive interaction from the equatorial bond pairs, therefore axial bonds have been found to be slightly longer and hence slightly weaker than the equatorial bonds which makes PCL5 molecule more reactive. And this is a very frequently asked question in class 11th as well as 12th that why PCL5 is very reactive and do all these 5 PCL5 bonds are equivalent or not? Give reason. So you can explain the reason for these conceptual questions on the basis of the hybridization and its shape. Now let me discuss the formation of SF6 molecule. The hybridization is sp3d2 hybridization. In SF6, the central sulfur atom has the ground state outer electronic configuration 3s2, 3p4. In the excited state, the available 6 orbitals that is 1s, 3p and 2d are singly occupied by the electrons. These orbitals hybridize to form 6 new sp3d2 hybrid orbitals which are projected towards the 6 corners of a regular octahedron in SF6. These 6 sp3d2 hybrid orbitals overlap with singly occupied orbitals of the fluorine atoms to form 6 SF sigma bonds. Thus, SF6 molecule has a regular octahedral geometry as shown in the figure. Now you can see the shape of the sp3d2 hybridization that is SF6 molecule and the geometry is octahedral. So let me summarize. For explaining the characteristic shapes of the polyatomic molecules, Pauling introduced the concept of hybridization of atomic orbitals. SP sp2, sp3 hybridization of atomic orbitals of beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen and oxygen are used to explain the formation and geometrical shape of the molecules like beryllium chloride, boron trichloride, methane, ammonia and water. They also explain the formation of the multiple bonds in the molecules like ethene and ethyne. So dear children, I hope that you have understood the concept of the mixing of the orbitals which is known as hybridization which has solved the many problems of the angle or the directional nature of the bonds. I hope everything is clear to you. Thank you.